All right, I guess I also may as well show you the other thing we started. And I guess more to give uh, some uh, something for the press break to work against, I decided to start putting in a press. I was going to wait, but you know what? The kids seemed really into it during the game when I wanted them to get after it. So uh, I figured I might as well start. There's going to be a couple of presses I'm going to be teaching them. I'm really, really looking forward to it. I just don't want to to send them, uh, let them loose too fast with this kind of stuff. But I at least uh, introduced them to, to Diamond, which is one of the three presses that I'm going to have you kids run. I keep forgetting whether I should be talking to the kids or the parents. I'll just go back and forth. And the thing about pressing and the thing about trapping is that it, it, you, you give them general principles about where to go and what to do. And yes, there are kind of different subtleties at different presses, but a lot of it really is a mindset. And a lot of it really is the commitment to, to get after it. Even when we just started doing it, I had to, I had to yell at them to get it, yell at you kids to get in the press. Everybody wants to get back so, so quickly. And I guess that's a kind of a good habit when you're not pressing. But when you're pressing, you really have to commit to it and to really, really get after it and get into it. And, and, the ability to do that is far more important than to be able to 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 do an effective trap with the with the completely perfect 100% fundamentals. But we are going to teach completely perfect 100% fundamentals as well. So I, I taught a really, really probably the simplest press to teach. Actually, the other press might be just as easy. Is is diamond, and more important than anything is, is kind of just the setup so that everybody just kind of knows where to go. And, and I went over everybody's basic responsibilities, essentially the four man being just a complete lunatic to be just all over the ball with with maybe like one inch of space between, you know, the baseline and him. And his entire job is to stop this kind of diagonal pass this way, okay, just to kind of angle and just do a lot of damage to this guy's life who's taking the ball out. And give the only option he's going to have is to throw the ball to this guy. And we're going to be able to get an immediate trap on him. Um, we have the two and our three man who are in charge. These are kind of the bulldogs who are really in charge of 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 getting in getting in it. You know, on, on this side of the court for the three. And if the ball comes on this side of the court, it'll be the two. Uh, the one, the point guard, might seem a little awkward for him to be back here, but because he's usually really quick and kind of a real kind of a quarterback, you know, kind of a really smart player. Sorry to use a stereotype like that, but it's usually what happens with these with these with these point guards is we have him up here because he's got to chase the ball, and wherever ball side is, he's got to go. So in this particular case, the one would actually be shaded a little more up up to here. So he is going where 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 the ball goes, uh, especially coming out of bounds. And the, the five man is basically as deep as the deepest man. He's, he's got to stop this big, long pass for a layup. So the idea is that, okay, so it comes into him, and this is really it. Okay, so there's an immediate trap here, and the idea is that it's one's job, he's got to stop both of these passes, and the two's job is to get in here and stop both of these passes. And, you know, how do you do that? How do you stop both passes? Well, it's it's going to be up to the three and the four of the guys trapping to force one, in force the guy with the ball into enough duress where these guys are going to be able to tell which way he's passing. And we're going to drill that. We're going to talk about that. The idea that the three and the four has got to force what's called an obvious pass. I mean, if you give him the, the, the chance of just looking up the court, and kind of picking one of these, I mean, you're just going to get obliterated. Okay, he's got a trap. They got a trap with enough aggression, such that these interceptors here will be able to see which way he's looking. So if you see him pivot towards the, you know, the immediate back pass, the two will cut that off. If you see him looking up the sideline, the one will cut that off. With these guys always looking for that kind of tough penetrating pass to the middle. So it's 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 
there's definitely there are nuances which we're going to go over, like what to do if he passes it back and what to do if he hits this guy in the middle and all that kind of stuff. But all we really went over is his basic alignment and, and to tell them to just get after it and to really anticipate and be aggressive. You know, We're going to go over more details as we go on, but I do want at least for the people who weren't there to show you what we at least started. You know, The idea is that every single trap is the same. No matter what system you're in, there's going to be two trappers, there's going to be two interceptors, and there's going to be one protector. And you know, this is called diamond because it's set up in kind of a diamond set. You know? um, but we did a little of that, and again, it was enough to give the press break something to go after. And we are probably we are going to eventually be a pretty aggressive pressing team once I have the time to really, you know, to, to, to teach it teach it to them and have them drill it and to just kind of work at it. So we started with that as well.